Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center and today we're going to talk about uh, wild rabbits and domesticated rabbits. We're also going to share what we tell our customers when we sell our rabbits. The information, the really important information that we share and why we don't do any guarantees, promises or warranties. We're going to go over all of that. Here we go. So we don't make a habit of of caging wild animals. And you know, in a lot of states it's illegal to cage a wild rabbit. This rabbit lived in our raised bed. It was about the, I mean, it was smaller than a pack of playing cards. So two days straight, I watched this rabbit make its way around this raised bed. I was prepping it, it was actually where we were growing all our salad. I chose to take the rabbit and add it to this litter of white rabbits. They were all right around the same size. And it was really interesting to watch them grow and see the grow rate. Our New Zealand rabbits grow fast. I think it was about a month and they, our rabbits had already tripled the size of this wild cottontail. So as far as the size go, the rabbits will never reach the size of our New Zealand or medium breeds. The European rabbits top out around five and a half pounds. Our cottontail rabbits top out around three and a half pounds. You know, there's 29 different species of wild rabbit, but there's 17 species of just cottontail alone. The 1700s when people started to, to introduce rabbits all over the world, every continent except Antarctica. And that was to balance the ecosystem, that was to feed the wild. Being able to evade and breed as well as they do, you know, there, there probably will always be rabbits. It's amazing how different they really are. Even though they look the same, they'll never breed, they'll never be able to breed and make new, new rabbits. This New Zealand and this cottontail, they have a different DNA makeup. The DNA makes up the chromosomes. The, the wild rabbits, our New Zealands have 38 chromosomes. The European rabbit has 44 chromosomes. Our Eastern cottontail has 42 chromosomes. They'll just never be able to make uh, a baby rabbit because the DNA just doesn't line up. There's a little difference when it comes to European rabbits and cottontails. The European rabbits live in these tunneling systems called warrens. And they'll have their, they'll kindle in their warrens and, but cottontails will live in brush piles. They'll live above ground. And they will, you know, usually set up on edges of fields and because of all the predators. They're constantly trying to evade predators. That's why they don't really sleep. You know, unless you have, like domesticated rabbits, they'll sleep for eight hours a day. You know, they'll, they'll hunker down under a chair or under a, you know, a little uh, crevice or tunnel or something. But wild rabbits, they don't really have that privilege. They can't, they can't really do that or that means that that could be their life. So wild rabbits don't really sleep the same way. They don't have the same schedule. So the lifespan of wild rabbits are right around two years only because everything's hunting them. But our domesticated rabbits, you know, they'll live usually around seven to ten years. European rabbits, cottontail rabbits, domesticated rabbits, they all pretty much can eat the same stuff. Our rabbits will stick to hay and pellet and greens once in a while, but wild rabbits will eat bark and clover and flowers and things like that. Basically anything it can eat safely and then make it back into its brush pile or its hiding place. So as far as breeding goes, our rabbits, the gestation period are around 32 days and wild rabbits pretty much the same thing and that's why you see rabbits that are abandoned around four weeks because wild rabbits are bred within a day or two from kindling their litter. In some cases some rabbits are bred within between kits being born so that means they have 30 days to nurse their litter and they have to abandon that litter right around a month to go have their next litter and you know wild rabbits will have they can have up to seven litters a year. Baby cottontails are born they have this little white line, this little mohawk, and they grow out of that. Once they, they get older, they'll, they'll lose that. You know, European rabbits they sometimes come in black. Sometimes they come in really dark brown. They don't have that chestnut agouti look. Um, that's a different, you know, that's just a different look, but. A cottontail rabbit is a loner rabbit, and the European rabbit, they're known to, to live in packs, just kind of like the Arctic hare does. So today we're gonna let this cottontail rabbit go. I won't cage it again. I won't try to keep it uh, domesticated. I know it's a wild rabbit, and you know after handling it and everything, I can see I can see the wild in it. 
you know, it was an eye-opener for me to handle a wild rabbit uh, every day and see how difficult it was compared to my New Zealands and my Californians. You can see how beneficial it is to raise domesticated rabbits for a meat production versus a wild cottontail. It was raised for two months in one of our cages with this litter. We've sold every rabbit in the litter except for this one, this blue-eyed white doe. We're gonna keep her and add her to our breeding program. But today, we're gonna, we're gonna free this rabbit. We're gonna let her go right by where we, we found her. We're going to take this rabbit over to our raised bed and we will let it go right where we found it. It's just not easy to handle. Look at how it just kicks. Sheesh. Okay, so we got it. Let's go. So this is where we found it, in this raised bed. And I'm just gonna open this up, tip this over, and let her go. See you later. One thing I wanna mention, if you ever find a wild litter of rabbits, whatever you do, don't pick them up and move them. You know, just because mom's not there, it doesn't mean that she's not nursing them or anything like that. You know, moms, Mama rabbits will only nurse their litter for a couple minutes, maybe twice a day. So you're probably not gonna see her. And she may only do it when nobody's around, even at nighttime. Honeybees drink, we have a bunch of buckets out with mineral water so they can hydrate. What we were doing was we were filling up the water one day and how we found them was we started hearing uh, squealing. So rabbits will squeal like a pig when they're being killed or hurt or if they're just scared, it's a distress call. So. I, the, what was happening was we filled the buckets up with water and it was actually pushing down in the nest and one of them started to squeal. We didn't know they were there. I lifted up the bucket real quick and that was when I found the litter of rabbits. We got a whole litter of rabbits right here. So these guys look about two weeks old and cottontails are, are much smaller. Their growth rate is incredibly slow. And these are our honeybee buckets. We also have a honeybee channel called Bobby's Bees. If you guys want to check it out, if you're interested in beekeeping. But this keeps them away from our pool. We just did a video on our pools behind the corn. The corn's getting taller now, so you can't really see it. We got our, our corn in late, so it's not very tall. I thought there was only four, there's five. Oh wait, there is four. I'm gonna cover them up and I'm just gonna try to put the bucket right here and where, cover them back up here. But well, it's funny how she didn't really dig a hole at all. She just kinda, see if I can put this bucket near them. Okay, they should be good. The other day somebody called me and asked me about returns and you know warranties with rabbits and all that stuff. I wanted to go over that. I wanted to help some folks out. Just maybe not so much you don't have to necessarily adopt what I do, but I wanted to share for all those that are starting their rabbitry. So every rabbit sold comes with a pedigree and on that pedigree has all the genetic makeup of the rabbit of course, but also has my information if anybody ever needs to reach out and it has the policy as far as no promises, no warranties, or guarantees made. Why do I do that? Because this rabbit, when it comes to its life, there is no return, there is no warranty. It's very important, and I share this in the nicest, most polite way I possibly can with all my customers, it's very important that they take full ownership immediately, as soon as they leave, hit the air conditioner. These rabbits need to be comfortable. They can't be in the sun. Obviously, they're prone to heat stroke. You know, most people know that. You know, a lot of times when they're picked up, it is the most, it's the biggest day for them. They're used to their own sights and smells and things like that. So when they're put in a car, in a box, put in a new house with all these new faces and new smells, that is so stressful. All this rabbit wants is a nice, quiet space. They want a nice, dark, shady area 
and that will help them adjust. Stick to hay and pellet in clean water for the first few months, especially today. Try to be, try to take them home and not hand them off to each other because that could that could get your rabbit so stressed out. Don't put it in the same room with the barking dogs and the cats, you know, messing with the cage, uh, because really all they want is a nice, quiet place to go for the day, and that'll help them adjust. If somebody calls back and says, my rabbit died, you know, I've had those calls before. Unfortunately, I've had those calls. Most of the time, it's because people were feeding their rabbits something they shouldn't have, or overfeeding their rabbits vegetables and treats and greens, and and it got to the, it, it destroyed their digestion and stressed their body out to the point where it killed them. So it's really important. These rabbits are really delicate and, uh, you know, it doesn't take much to stress them out and kill them. So I hope that helps somebody out there, you know, and you can be as polite as possible. Just explain to them that, you know, we don't do refunds, but if you change your mind, you're always welcome to, to bring the rabbit back. We'll house it, feed it, and find it in another home. But you know as well as I do, if you have rabbits, it takes a lot of time and, and effort to make sure these rabbits stay comfortable and healthy. But that's just our policy. I hope that helps you guys out there. And if you guys have any questions, or comments about that, please leave them. Even if you have negative comments, um, I still read those. You know, sometimes people make really good points, and you know, I'm always learning. So uh, feel free, to feel free to leave those if, if that's how you feel. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.